On this episode of History Hunters, Jeff and Sarah visit historic Virginia City and check out the famous Silver Terrace Cemetery. On this first of a three-part series on Virginia City and its Comstock loan, the couple visits graves of noteworthy historical figures long forgotten from Nevada's past. There's Sarah. She can't wait to get into the cemetery. How much? A couple of bucks? Yeah, it's a donation and there's brochures. So Sarah and I decided to come to Virginia City and check out the Silver Terrace Cemetery and find what notable graves that we could find here. There's some remnants of mining that occurred here a long time ago. This entire region produced millions of dollars worth of silver starting in 1859. Mount Davidson in the background and a number of ambitious people have climbed to the top of that. Two Irish immigrants searching for gold were the first to strike it rich at the future site of Virginia City. Instead of gold, it's silver they discover. Their 1859 discovery of the Comstock Lode caused Virginia City to grow rapidly into a metropolis of 25,000. Untold riches resulted from the 1873 discovery of the Big Bonanza mine, but fortunes were short-lived. When the mines tapped out around 1878, Virginia City's importance and population rapidly dwindled. The silver that was pulled out of this mining region, the Comstock mining region, actually helped support the U.S. government during the Civil War. And again, I'm at high altitude, and guess what? I'm gonna be out of breath this entire trip. <laughs> 6,200 feet. <sighs> it's cool outside, but yeah. the direct sunlight is really intense. Oh, there's a mention of the... Killed by the fire of... Oh, 1875. That. In October of 1875, Virginia City was devastated by a great fire, destroyed a lot of the buildings. So a lot of the buildings that you see today were actually built a year later, like 1876. Mary Jane Simpson wasn't a woman, but a mule, which died in the fire of October 26, 1875. The inferno destroyed about 2,000 buildings and left 8,000 residents homeless. Miraculously, only four people were killed but flames claimed the beloved mule that worked the mines. In her eight months of working the consolidated Virginia mine, it said the mule hauled out $8 million in silver and gold. Mary Jane also transported $10 million in silver during 18 months inside the Belcher mine. An attempt to rescue the animal ended when the flames grew too intense and she perished. The within was only a mule. Still, she was nobody's fuel. That's just weird. Sarah and I like to check out the old cemeteries because they are so different than the modern day cemeteries. The tombstones are very elaborate, something you don't see every day. Over here, we've got a, a grave of an I.A. Pearson. It's said that about a third of the population here of Virginia City was Irish. Giant dandelion. <laughs> Giant dandelion? Look. Are you going to do it? You're not going to be able to do that one. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nope. there's more Failure. of that. <laughs> it reminds me of Bug's Life. Bug's Life. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, the ant flick rides one of those and flies off. So where's some notable graves in there? Yeah, where do you want to see? I think we should go up to the top of that hill because I think something must be up there. Which is right there. Kind of sad that this one's been completely knocked off the base. Disease, accidents, and lawlessness often cut lives far short. Crime in Virginia City was tame compared to mining towns like Bodie, California. Still, like any community, Virginia City had its share of robberies, saloon fights, and shootings. Even the time a brother tried to kill his sister in 1876, 
Several notable murders in Virginia City included that of August Bohaben, whose tombstone bears the word murdered. The French immigrant co-owned a Virginia City store which was holding money in trust for an irresponsible drunkard who would have spent it all and deprived his wife and children. When Jerry Berry came looking for more than his $5 daily allotment, he was rebuffed by Bohaben's business partner. As Bohaben rushed to aid his partner, Barry pulled a gun and shot him, crying, Take that, you damn foreigner! Barry blamed his actions on alcohol and begged for mercy, but he was hung on July 19, 1892. Do you like going to cemeteries? I don't know if likes the right word. They're interesting. I mean, I don't dislike them, but I don't go, Ooh, cemeteries. Let me go check them out. I like looking at the headstones, seeing the ages of people. Um, the older ones have like super neat metal work, iron work. Nowadays, they just want to put you in a hole, put your name on the top of it and move on. Yeah. Maintaining this stuff is... But the world really can't afford to have everybody treated like this. I mean, think of all the marble that's milled out of the ground that uh, that goes on to that's used for um, countertops I mean, just instead of graves nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one here, I mean, that must weigh four or five hundred pounds. It's William Oates. He died in 1893, and they were very specific about 57 years old, six months, and seven days. You know what? That's about my age. <laughs> these are kind of interesting over here these kind of graves that uh, are sculpted to look like cloth and that's been hanging there since 1889 again a lot of irish people are buried here this city attracted a lot of irish immigrants who worked the mines back in the 1870s 1860s Let's put money on the gravestone What's that mean? money i asked that question once like why are people leaving money at graves Somebody said it's just to pay homage, kind of a way to say, I've been here and I thought of you. This is kind of symbolic of this entire cemetery. It's a dead tree. Sarah discovered Captain Edward Story's grave. For whom Story County was named 1828 to 1860. Wow, that's cool. This entire county was named after him. He died in 1860. Same year Abraham Lincoln was elected president. He was a mason. There's a wooden block at the top. I wonder what that had on it. I noticed that this grave right here had an interesting piece of artwork attached to the face of it. This is really a heart-wrenching tombstone. It shows the hand of a husband reaching up to the arm of his wife as she departs for heaven. This is the grave of Sarah Curry Halleck, who was born in Virginia in 1847 and came out west with her family in the late 1850s, settling in Virginia City, where her father owned a saloon. In 1869, she married James Halleck, and she died at the age of 24 in complications of childbirth on June 20th, 1871, and her baby boy James survived. This is the grave of Selden McMeans. He was a Tennessee-born doctor who was quite a rabble-rouser for the South during the war between the states. Dr. McMeans treated most of the miners in town for drinking water contaminated with arsenic. He also tended to every kind of medical emergency here in town, ranging from crushed limbs and burns from exploding balloons. Wow. Well, they're like stacking rocks on it, 1876. Sarah's got me going down this hill. Actually, she's going down this hill. And there's a few graves down here. Well, here we go. It's a um, J.M. Leg, Company A of the 3rd Iowa Calvary. Apparently that's a Civil War grave right here in Virginia City. J.M. Legg was mentioned in a local newspaper as a competitor in a local shooting contest at a town event. 
And judging by his score, he was a fairly good marksman. Nothing like feeling a sense of history is when you go through a graveyard and see all the people who lived a long time ago. And in many cases, their tombstones have a lot of the information still intact on them. Marion Davidson, 1842 to 1896. Might be related to Davidson up there, or Davidson Mountain. This is the Pioneer Cemetery. Again, you're probably gonna find a lot of Irish names here. There's a McCabe. The poor people had to resort to these wooden headstones because they couldn't afford the stone. The more wealth you had, the bigger your tombstone, because the more you could afford. The inscription on it is long gone. A lot of Vermont natives here. Zeb Dexter, 1895. Rabbit was right there and scared the snot out of me. <laughs> big old jackrabbit with big jackrabbit ears. I, w <laughs> I wish I had my camera on. That rabbit scared the crap out of me. What got my attention was this uh, this grave here. And somebody put this rock on it. <sighs> rabbit was right here. I can't make out that name. It's crazy. Did you see him? Yeah. <laughs> Ears popped up because he didn't know I was over there until I... Yeah, he went... Ah, oh, bunny! <laughs> he went your way and then he shot up the hill. Yeah. You never know what you're going to find in the cemetery, including jackrabbits. Scare you. Right over here, evidence of mining operations. Off in the distance, we hear the Virginia and Truckee Railroad going old pieces of glass here that look weathered blue almost very old I'm sure it's a bottle somebody may have been drinking up here at the cemetery imagine that I just found this broken neck of a glass bottle and believe it could be a medicine bottle maybe a lot of drinking around here Lovejoy oh Jim A. Lovejoy died oh, 1888 native of Maine he must have been poor because he's got a wooden stone. Or wooden. <laughs> you got wooden a wooden stone. stone. Wooden grave marker. It looks like, eight, what'd you say, 18? 1888 is what I said. Okay, yeah, I can see it. J. N. Carey, Company A, 1st Battalion, Nevada Infantry. William Pollock. Died in 1877. He was 24 years old. Looks like somebody tried to push this thing over. I tell you what, there's a lot of jerks in the world when they, you try to desecrate a grave. I think that's the most despicable thing. He was only a year and 28 days old. A year and a month old. That was a baby. So here's your evidence to the migrants who came, flocked here to Virginia City to mine. This individual died in 1876, 36 years old, a native of Cornwall, England. He's got this elaborate wooden enclosure that's fallen apart. I'm sure these were the square-headed nails. They have four sides to them. They're not round. But look at this. This was up here. It's just fallen. So it's pretty common back in the day to see a lot of headstones of young babies. This one was two years old, four months probably died of something that today could have easily been saved. This had some of this Roger Lavaki, who died nine years ago, has a naked lady on it, which I don't think I've ever seen that before. And a cat. I never worry about cats or money because the Lord will provide. Roger Lavaki actually was a Jackson Hole News photographer in 1971 when he documented the first ski descent of the Grand Tetons. He got an assessment, he shot some aerial photos of the ski marks of the first skier to go down that mountain. Irish names are all over the cemetery. Next to the cemetery over here is this low spot, and I believe this is the exact location where they had the gallows, where they hung John Milliam. He was a French baker who was accused of murdering a very popular prostitute here in Virginia City by the name of Julia Bullet or Boulet. 
She was murdered the night of January 20th, 1867 in her house at the corner of C and I believe Union Street. I could be wrong on that. Uh, the entire community was kind of outraged. Well, the guys were, uh, especially the fire department. She supported the fire department with her benevolent fundraising and I'm sure some of the guys were friendly with her. Women didn't like her too well. About two years later, after evidence was found in his apartment that he killed her and had her possessions that were stolen from her that night, he actually met his fate here in this area. And it was said that 4,000 people came out and picnicked and watched this guy hang, which seems kind of morbid. One of the people who was actually here back in town was Mark Twain. He came back to visit and he happened to be here and he actually wrote about watching the hanging of John Milliam. He, like many people, thought he would find some satisfaction in that, but he later wrote that he had never wanted to ever see a hanging again because it was so very sad to see somebody die like that. I understand the, the need for you know taking somebody's life or taking somebody else's life, but the actual process of watching that is probably not very appealing to anybody. Way up the hill there, far above the cemetery, above the road entering Geiger Grade, you see evidence of mining still. We're entering a different part of the cemetery. This headstone over here caught my eye. Looks like maybe his name was Milford or Clifford McHugh, about 1881, native of Ireland. 43 years old. Looks like his tombstone was busted up and repaired. Pieces of it gone. Didn't hold too good. Another Irish person here, Mary Timmerman. 1833 died 1881. Hi. What are you doing? Doing cool. Huh. And over here is a monument that shows Christ carrying the cross. So he must be in the Catholic part of the cemetery. Robert Bennett, he came out here from Connecticut, died 1877, and also his little son, Hard Life. But what's creepy is the grave is kind of sunken in here. There's a Reagan, 1864. That would be Irish, because of course President Reagan had his roots in Ireland. Twenty-eight years old, man. Ironically, Father Paul Meineke was born in Modesto, California, which is where we live, and he was pastor of St. Mary's in the Mountains here in Virginia City. He was ordained in 1935 and died in 1974. There's Jesus praying in the garden. Here's the Diamond family plot. And over here, you see that Ellen was the wife of Thomas Diamond, who died on June 17, 74, 22 years old. I think it's interesting how this guy, they mention his hometown of Machias, Maine, 22 years old, 77 is when he died in the grave of William Crowley, native of Ireland, died in 1888. He was a little older, he was 53. Left a wife, Hannah. Yeah, as you can see, time has kind of tilted that tombstone a little bit. Here you go with evidence of people messing with graves. This one completely knocked off. Like I said, I don't think you can get any lower than desecrating somebody's grave. It's just despicable. The one thing that fascinates me about graves is you look back at that town, you see how everybody bolted up those buildings. Well, the people that inhabited that street, those streets back there, are now populating this ground here, this very hollowed ground. There's acres and acres of graves. Most of them who don't have a history that's been recorded. So we got a little pamphlet here trying to find some of the graves of the people who kind of met some unusual types of deaths and haven't been able to find any of them. So it looks like I spoke too soon here. This is one that's in the guidebook. This poor unfortunate soul, John Gallardi, died on December 2nd, 1889 at age 36 when he was run over by a train 
of the Virginia and Truckee Railroad died somewhere over there. This is an interesting headstone. At the top, it's an open book of the Bible. It belongs to Catherine O'Connor, wife of Eugene. She died in 1889 at the age of 35. And looked at all the intricate chiseling that had to take place for this. There's a big mound over there behind that house there of evidence of a major mining operation that occurred here. It's just east of C Street, which is the main street in town. Here's another veteran of New York Infantry, Boland, Sergeant Healy, the 10th Massachusetts Infantry. No doubt a lot of the veterans who served in the Civil War came out west when they heard about all the mining opportunities here in Virginia City. Kind of sad they used this little area here. I'm not sure if it's a grave, but it probably is. Somebody just used it for a dump. This grave's completely collapsed on top. Mr. Carney. This must be the French section. It's all in French. 1878. This individual here, 1873, was from Quebec, died at the age of 26. Look at this little cage. All these things just falling in. There's a 40-year-old from Ireland over there. I'm looking for Sarah. This cemetery just keeps going on and on and on. It's crazy how many acres are here. So Thomas O'Sullivan here was also a native of Ireland and he died at the age of 37. A lot of these people died from simple things like diseases that can easily be cured today. So this is the Fireman's Cemetery. It's reserved for firefighters serving the Comstock load only. This is the wood marker belonging to Fire Chief George Hanbridge who died May 26, 1884. He died in an industrial accident while working at the gas works here in Virginia City. He fell and he broke his neck. Unfortunately, he left a wife behind. He was a member of the Knickerbocker Engine Company number no. five, and he's buried right here. Only until you deeply ponder the mystery of death, something all must face, can you fully realize and appreciate the incredible gift of life and its brevity. So we're here in historic Virginia City. We just toured the St. Mary's of the Mountains Catholic Church, relaxing out here on the steps of it. And Sarah's commenting about my feet being a little dry <laughs> after walking through the cemetery. No. You said I looked like what? They were dry beforehand. You lotioned your legs before we left, but you didn't lotion your feet. And your feet look like, your, little, <laughs> your toes look like pieces of chalk because they're so white and ashy. Great. 